Uh, welcome to everyone who's joining from uh, points beyond. Um, uh, in North America, which is where I am, um, the Northern Hemisphere, spring started this week. And um, with spring is uh, not an exact uh, coincidence, but uh, squirrels and birds and animal wildlife are in uh, plentiful supply, no matter where you are in the world. Critter Guard has been um, for 20 years involved in the efforts to mitigate uh, damage caused by these animals and wildlife in in overhead lines and substations. And so I want to spend a few minutes with you today going through kind of who is Critter Guard and what makes us different from some of the other uh, animal mitigation people you'll see out there. So Randy gave a nice introduction for, for me. Um, I've been doing this for um, well, a long time now. Um, uh, I, I actually uh, purchased the company Credit Guard um, a number of years ago. Um, and so one of the things we've kind of learned with, uh, with squirrels and birds is, and this is backed up by uh, reams of data from the American Public Power Institute, and many others. Randy mentioned that Critter Guard has done our own research and curated our own statistics. And you can see those uh, online, either at our website or at um, Electricity Forum and, and the magazines that, that uh, Randy has mentioned. Um, bottom line is, is that squirrels and birds uh, are undisputed as the number one and number two animal related power outages in the world. And it kind of causes me to think, i show you my age here a little bit, um, causes me to think about an old cartoon that we used to have. That's Alfred E. Newman up in the corner. Uh, Alfred E. Newman was famous years ago in the Mad Magazine for having this devil may care attitude. What, me worry? And we sort of see that a lot with a number of the utilities we deal with. Um, our number one customer across the world is uh, public utilities, um, whether state owned or private. Um, and um, um, so we we get these kind of activities all the time. Bottom line is, as Randy said earlier, you know it's going to happen. Squirrels are curious little critters. They will show up at the weirdest locations. And what fascinates them is anybody's guess. So our company has a 20 year track record um, with these utilities offering a very different way to solve this problem. There, are, you'll see as we go through, there's a lot of different solutions out there. All of them have some degree of effectiveness. We've kind of learned over the years with Critter Guard that um, we're different because we do one major thing differently. Our products move when the squirrel engages it. And that makes it uh, all the difference in the world. And we'll go through that in detail. So a little bit more about the company. Um, we were started in 2001 in Columbia, Missouri. I actually knew the original owners, which is why I'm an owner today, because I knew how the company had been set up and run. Um, when, when we bought it, um, it's expanded significantly since that time. Uh, we now ship worldwide. We have customers on six continents. Um, and a, a very reliable product. So um, we welcome your investigation. If you've not heard or talked to Critter Guard about your animal issues, by all means, reach out afterwards and we'll be happy to get with you. So a little bit of background in terms of concepts, maybe not definitions so much, but at least concepts. We definitely prefer our customers to be proactive. Don't wait for the squirrel outage to happen. You know it's going to just a matter of when. Um, so we like to encourage our customers to be proactive, to control the situation before it's occurred, rather than we hear from a lot of customers, we just had an outage, it's a million dollar damage on the, on the uh, substation, what do you got? Well, that's a little late. It's a whole lot cheaper to do that ahead of the game than it is to wait until the squirrel knocks you out. Also, we draw the distinction between, even though our name, our, our product names are things like line guard and pole guard, um, we're actually barriers as opposed to guards. 
Um, a guard is sometimes referred to as a cover, a device that goes around or over a specific uh, device of a specific voltage. Instead, our approach is to block the highway. The highway is the means of access to get to that energized device. And so we prefer to call our products barriers uh, rather than covers or guards. So this is just a, a sample, and it can be many, many, many more than these, of typical types of guards that you'll see out on the market. We think one of the unique characteristics of all of these is all of the different shapes and sizes and and containers and structures that are there. And most of that is a reaction to the fact that these devices are all different voltages. They're all mounted somewhat differently. Um, there's obviously very technical issues in terms of potential bridging or insulation resistance that has to be managed and, and taken care of. And and you can see if you, if you take a look at some of the ubiquitous uh, guards that are out there, uh, for instance, the picture in the lower right-hand corner, we see these a lot, and there's nothing wrong with them. They work well. We don't we don't offer that product, but you'll see a lot of them in substations. But one of the things you'll notice is, is that those guards actually overlap each other based on the phase distance. That overlapping creates multiple problems. Number one, it um, creates a wonderful nesting place for a bird right behind it because now they feel like they've got a cage that they can build into. Number two, um, if there is any particular material degradation of that guard, you could have a potential insulation resistance problem there as well, because it could create a potential ground plane. So with line guard and pole guard, we don't have those problems. Those other guards, any guard creates lots of questions. Which ones do I need? Where can I use it? Is it actually going to fit? Um, what kind of service is required for it? Um, you know, one of the service components we hear quite often is, is that, yeah, our, our overhead linemen need to go do thermography to go do some temperature measurements, and the guard is in the way. So, obviously, you have to remove the guard, then do your temperature measurement, then put the guard back. How many times do you think we've heard from companies that said, yeah, they forgot to put the guard back? Again, um, Critic Guard doesn't have that problem because it's never a guard you ever have to remove. It's never a guard you ever have to maintain. Once you put it up, it's there for the lifespan. So we like to say that Critic Guard is distinctly different. We're not like those other guard companies because we block the access rather than cover the device. So, well, how did we come up with that idea? Well, first question is, if you think about all the overhead equipment, transformers, switches, reclosers, um, any other kinds of products that may be on pole-mounted equipment or even some other structure, what's the common thing among all of that equipment, regardless of voltage, and that is it's connected by a wire, a conductor. The animal uses that conductor. He doesn't care about the device. He hears the device buzzing, or uh, maybe it's warm, or he's just curious, but he uses that conductor, that overhead line as a highway, to get to where he wants to go. In the same way that the conductor is a highway, the power pole is also a highway. Only this time, the highway is from the ground to get to an overhead space. Now, obviously, he can use a tree or another building to get up there as well, which is why we offer both ways of protection. So you can protect the pole. You can also protect the line. And in doing so, anything that's at the top of the pole, regardless of the type of equipment and regardless of the voltage, is protected by the barrier. So we basically call, especially for substations, we call line guard an overhead fence. It's basically a virtual roof. Most substations will have uh, as a security mechanism, mostly for two-legged animals, um, they'll have a, a chain link fence around, in some cases, even more hardened or uh, bulletproof even than, than that. But almost always there's a fence, at least in North America. Um, 
in um, in this case, there's no blockade unless you're using line guard. There's no blockade from the animal coming up a tree or a pole outside the substation and carrying across into the substation on the overhead line. And then he's now down inside the fence where it's protected. He's away from predators um, and he can have a grand time in there. And so obviously line guard will prevent that from happening. And we see many, many utilities that have installed line guard now across all of their substations where animal mitigation is a, is a risk. So line guard is a near universal solution. So as I've said, we don't really care what the voltage of the line is. It could be as simple as an overhead service entrance cable to a home or a business, single phase, or it may be three phase power, or it may be even transmission power, um, depending on where the, the animal um, problem exists. As the name implies, it's guarding the line called line guard, but in fact, it's guarding the assets on the line. So as I said, we're, we're basically putting a barrier on the line, much like a utility crew or a road construction crew would block the highway so that traffic can't be at risk getting over where the work's going on. We would use the same approach with line guard on the overhead line. The design is one, even though it just sits there most of the time, the design is one that moves or spins once the animal engages with it. Because they're curious and because they want to get to wherever they're going, they will engage with the product. And as soon as they do, they put their paws or their uh, body movement on the wheel, the outside wheel, and it spins and it causes them to become unstable. And once they've done that, they can no longer keep going forward. Now they're hanging on for dear life. Um, and so they normally back up. And many times they'll just give up after the first try. Other cases are a little more aggressive and they'll try multiple times. And we'll take a look at that here in a second. We've applied this against all kinds of crawling animals. It's not just squirrels, rats, snakes, monkeys, even sloths. We mentioned sloths because while we don't see that very often, it is a, 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 an opportunity for some of our customers where they have uh, ecological preserves or, um, you know, um, animal habitats, and they have protected species, either by government or local uh, regulatory e issues. And that could be a type of a monkey or maybe a sloth. And these animals have very little defense when they're up on the overhead line. And God forbid, they actually cross two phases uh, and cause an outage and perhaps even kill the animal. Now the utility has a public relations nightmare on their hand as well. So that's what line guard helps stop. Um, and again, once you put it up, there's no maintenance. So in the presentation, I'm going to link to another video here. I'll, I've got it linked separately. So we'll go to it next. Whoops. There we go. Can everybody see this? I hope Randy, can you say yes? That's showing up. Yeah, that's fine, uh, John. I okay, can see great. That. So you'll see this video. This is a customer supplied video of line guard that's been installed on an overhead service entrance cable to their home or office. And this particular animal appears to be a rat. We're not exactly sure, but it doesn't seem to have the fuzzy tail um, that you'd expect with a squirrel. But the behavior is exactly the same. The animal will approach the wheel, and as soon as he puts his weight on it, it spins him upside down. Well, now he's confused and disoriented. He doesn't quite know what to do. So he's trying to figure out, how do I get by this thing? And the really ambitious ones, will he's going back and he's going to rethink his strategy. Now, in a second clip, he's coming back on the line, and he's approaching it again, and this time he's got a different plan. So. He's going to try, and sure enough, it spins him again. It's like, yeah, that's not going to work, so I'm going to do one last attempt here to see if I can get over this spinning wheel. And that means he's going to jump. That's why we call that outside. So there he jumped. Now the rollers spin, and you notice the rollers spun independently of the wheel, and they spin independently of each other. 
So it's kind of like that game show where they put the contestants on spinning barrels in the water. One barrel spins one way and the other barrel spins the other way and the animal just can't get their footing. It's also a very hard plastic shell. It's smooth. There's almost no surface for the animal to get his claws into. So if he does try to jump, that's also why it's five feet long. Each of those rollers is one foot. And together, that's about a five foot long system. And the squirrel from a standing start can't jump five feet. He's going to land on roller three or four or even five. And as long as the roller spins freely, he's not getting past it. And the other great thing about line guard is once they can't get past it, animals seem to have this built-in communication system that us humans don't understand. They're able to tell everybody else, don't go that way. It doesn't work. That way is blocked. We've noticed several times that it's like once an animal has been repelled, they don't come back and their other partners don't come back either. So the, it drops the activity significantly, which is exactly what you're looking for. Meanwhile, there's no harm or interference to the electrical uh, conductivity. Uh, it's not affecting the electrical system whatsoever. And so, and it's not an insulator. It's not acting in any kind of an insulation role. And there's no potential bridging to adjacent lines. So if you had it on a three-phase line, which many times happens, the spacing on the three-phase line is such that these systems are not anywhere close to each other. So you have you still have the uh, recommended air gap between live phases. Okay, we'll go back to the presentation here. Yeah, I gotta, sorry, there we go. So you, as I mentioned before, you can use line guard virtually anywhere. It doesn't even have to be a powered line. Um, we have customers who put them on guy wires, which is the angled, um, you know, brace for a power pole. There's already existing guy guards on the market that are eight feet long conduit. It's like a split loom conduit that fits on a guy guard. But because they're eight feet long, they're actually pretty easy for the squirrels to go right past. We've seen it many times. And so we've had utilities and water uh, sewer districts and people like that come back and say, the animals are still going up the guy wires. So you can put it there as well. Basically, you want to install line guard anywhere on the line between where the critter comes on the line and whatever it is you're trying to protect. Maybe it's the top of a pole, maybe it's a transformer, maybe a switch or a recloser, something like that. And we don't care where you put line guard because, again, it doesn't affect any electrical characteristics. You just need to put it between where they come on the line, which might be a power pole, it may be another building, or it may be a tree that they drop off of. And as long as you put it between there and, for instance, your substation, they can't use that line anymore. We have different options based on install. It's quite easy to do. I mean, uh, we've got these all over the world. Um, Critter Guard does not install these ourselves. We don't have a service organization to install. Pretty much it's always the lineman installing this. Um, but you can put it on either hot or de-energized. Uh, we've had some utilities that say due to safety regulations in our utility, we have to de-energize the line. Okay, that's fine. That's obviously easy as long as you have the redundancy to cover that uh, during the time of the install. Or just recently, we've introduced a new hotline clamp. So the line, the system can be installed using a hot stick. It's a large C clamp that hangs over the line. You can tighten it up with, um, with your hot stick and never have to be too close to the line. Uh, the rollers snap together. Uh, so if you're wearing proper insulated gloves on the line, you're, you're good to go. Um, we have, uh, as I mentioned, virtually any overhead conductor, everything from triplex lines, uh, bundles, if you will, to individual conductors or even single phase lines, even coax 
um, you know, like uh, Cox and Charter, they're customers of ours as well. All the cable TV companies, telephone companies, doesn't matter what the line is. Uh, line guard only weighs about three pounds. Uh, it adds no stress or resistance to whatever size line. So we're good to go. And we know, even though most of the animal problems exist on lower voltages, um, distribution style voltages, um, we have installations up to 77 kV that we know about. So um, normally they're much lower than that, 38 kV and below. Uh, but if you've got a special need, by all means, uh, reach out and give us a shout. This is just another example of one of the things we offered to make this a little simpler for customers with larger cable bundles. Two major things, you see the, the larger roller openings, that's a blow up of the end of the roller once it's assembled over the line. The standard opening is one inch, but if you have a cable bundle like a triplex, that loose collection of cables might be larger than one inch. And if so, it's easy to cut the roller back to make a bigger hole. So some utilities have told us, yeah, that's fine, but we don't want to do that. So we now offer that as a defined product rather than making you do it. So if you have needs for um, triplex um, with either larger roller openings and or hotline clamps, you can see the clamp hanging on the picture on the left. It's very straightforward, simple clamp. Uh, but it handles a wide range of conductors and is very easy to install. So the next product we want to talk about is pole guard. So we just covered line guard. Now we're going to switch to pole guard. Again, it's a highway, but it's a highway from the ground up to the overhead asset. And pole guard blocks this highway. We use uh, two big plates they're rigid, sturdy plastic plates, same kind of plastic that's used in brake pads. So it's extremely wear resistant, very tough, and will repel animals that weigh up to 30 to 40 pounds. Um, we've had customers say, do you have something to repel a human? Uh, unfortunately, no, we haven't gotten to that level yet. But I, I suppose if you have humans crawling up your poles, you probably have need for uh, police or some other regulatory agency to take care of that. Um, so the plates surround the pole and are snapped together, and then they support seven individual rollers, same exact rollers as you saw on line guard. So we use those rollers for both systems. Um, and what happens is because they're literally just hanging on these brackets, an animal has to crawl up so he's basically upside down when he reaches the plates. The plates force him to the outside. And the only way around the outside of the plate is to grab that spinning roller, which he can't get hold of. His claws won't go into it. And now he can't get up over the corner. And so that's the major advantage for pole guard is literally it's that blockade that once the animals try, they give up. So major difference with pole guard versus other forms of wraps that you may have seen or be familiar with. We've seen uh, numbers of utilities have told us this, seen it ourselves as well. Some of those wraps are quite easy to jump. If a squirrel gets a head start going up a pole, uh, they'll just go right by it. And so uh, with pole guard, it blocks them. They can't get by it no matter how fast they're going. So I've got another video. And I have to start this one separately. This one, because it's hard to get these things. I got to go back to where it went now. Hang on. I'll, I'll get there in a minute. There we go. Hopefully everybody can see that. Instead of a power pole, this is a pecan tree. The pecans are uh, uh, similar to something a squirrel wants to get. So he's come from the ground. He's trying to go up the tree, which he's used to doing. And now pole guard is mounted on that tree. And you can see he tries from underneath, but he just can't get by it. And so they'll try and try and try. And finally, he goes back down and says, I got to go find a different tree. So um, we have utilities that will put this 
sometimes over miles and miles of, of uh, distribution and transmission lines, especially when they're out in the what I call the boonies out in rural areas, where the cost of a service call or a truck roll would be significant. And with pole guard on the pole, you never have to worry about it because no animal, not a snake, not a squirrel or a rat or a raccoon or a chipmunk can go up the pole. And so it just blocks all that activity. And so that's a definitely a, a very advantageous way to not have to worry about your animal mitigation problems on poles. I keep asking utilities to send me these videos of their power poles. We have thousands of them out there, but no one's standing around waiting to take a video. So we had to do this um, where uh, that's actually a tree in my backyard. So, uh, but the concept is exactly the same. Okay, so here's an example. Sorry, I should have shut the sound off on that. Let me go back and find that. That way it's not sque squealing at us. So here's actually an example in um, with both products applied. This particular installation is at a... Uh, a large U.S. city uh, in their uh, water and sewer district, and they had problems for years. They tried everything to keep critters off of their power poles, and you can see even on their guy wires. You'll notice that they've got line guard installed on the guy wires above an existing guy guard that they'd had there for years, and it wasn't stopping the squirrels. Once they put on line guard on what looks to be a, a pretty vertical line. Obviously, we recommend it for horizontal lines. But because of the way it's fastened to the line, it's a snug fit. It won't slide up or down, but it does need to spin. So again, key requirement when you install line guard, this each system, each roller, each component of the system needs to spin independently. Then you also see on the power pole, that's a wooden power pole. But that pole guard is installed there. And again, once they installed it, squirrel activity dropped to zero. We also do some special things with pole guard. Um, on the left, you see a pole guard mounted on a steel or a concrete pole. The pole guard system is identical to the same for wood, but it uses a different mounting system. In this case, that mounting system, you can't quite see it in great detail there. It uses um, uh, steel bands, the steel tensioning bands that many utilities will use to hang road signs or stoplights on steel poles. So they're used to that. They know that system works. It's easy to install. Um, and again, a very strong, stable support base for the pole guard on a steel pole. On the right side, you see a fairly customized configuration where the riser comes up next to the steel pole and you saw what we did there there's actually a modified set of plates that went around the riser and then still added an additional so there's instead of seven rollers on that system there's actually eight but that stopped the squirrels from going up both the riser or the pole and so that's that's worked very well as well that's a special order item but just to give you an idea that those are the kinds of things that we do. Pole guard can be used on pretty much any kind of a circular profile pole, wood, steel, concrete. We have used um, pole guard in customized um, rectangular poles. I'm not even sure the right word, but they're sort of a round profile on two opposing sides and a rectangular profile uh, on the opposite two sides. And we've done some cutouts to make that work. So that can be done as well. But ideally, they're round poles. Most poles taper. And so the higher you get, the smaller the diameter is. Uh, pole guard is designed to be mounted where the diameter is 12 inches. So for those of you that like math, that's um, 38 inches in circumference. And so... And if the pole happens to be smaller than that, where you have to mount pole guard, we've shown this optional flex tube, 
This is a very straightforward, you know, empty conduit that wraps around the pole, sits just above the pole guard plate. And if there were a gap between the pole and the pole guard plates, such that a mouse or a rat might be able to get through that gap, that's what that optional flex tube is for. So, and I mentioned we have, we're working on a standardized version to use the mounting fixture that we use for steel and concrete for all the poles, regardless of wood or steel, but we're not quite there yet. Um, so we have different fixtures. It's the same system. It's still called pole guard, but it's pole guard 301S for a steel pole and pole guard 301W for a wooden pole. Well, we've covered the number one cause of animal problems. What about the number two cause? That's birds. A couple of years ago, we started off a bird block. Similar to line guard and pole guard, it, has, it, it basically repels birds. It's not a diverter in the sense that most mechanical diverters, it's not mechanical at all. It's a scent-based product. In other words, it stinks or it smells. And the birds don't like it. So um, the trick of our particular formulation is, is that we're able to keep one of the formulations to last almost four months long. We offer it in two formulations. One is very strong and designed to chase the birds away quickly, but it will only last maybe six to eight weeks. And then it can be followed up with a longer formulation, which will last up to four months. In combination, that series will prevent birds from nesting or roosting and becoming a general nuisance uh, for the better part of the nesting season. So several months long, and basically you're training the birds to go somewhere else. It doesn't hurt the bird, won't kill them, doesn't hurt humans. Um, you may not like the smell. It smells like old garlic, uh, like a bad Italian restaurant, but uh, and you wouldn't want to have it in your office. Um, and it does have a shelf life. So we tell people, it's like, if you're going to install this, you need to have your plan ready to go so that when we ship it to you, you can put it up right away. Uh, we've had success with many different kinds of bird species. Technically, the scent was developed to be effective on all, I can never get the word right. It's, it's oviparous, I think is the correct technical word. So there'll be a test later. Not really. Um, oviparous means egg laying species. So, so rather than try to find out, will it work on my bird? Ask, does that bird lay eggs? And if that bird lays eggs, then likely our product will work on it. It works differently based on whether they're small birds like woodpeckers versus large birds. Large birds like an owl, an eagle, a hawk have large pronounced openings in their nostrils. When they breathe, they breathe in a lot of product at one time and it, it irritates them. Small birds don't breathe as much. So we, we've learned you have to be a, put out a little more product, a little more highly concentrated to chase the smaller birds away. But nonetheless, it's still effective. From pigeons to crows to uh, woodpeckers um, to owls and eagles, uh, we've had success with all of those. It's sort of a vapor barrier, but it's not really like a Star Wars type vapor barrier. Birds can fly through it. But what we're trying to do is keep them from staying someplace. So if they're going to a place and, and perching or resting or nesting uh, and just generally hanging out, and they happen to be in an area that you don't want them there because of the potential nuisance, then that's the where to th where to think about installing bird block. Uh, it's a timed release. The odor will last uh, for a long time, depending on what formulation you get. Uh, we generally prefer you start with the stronger formulation where you have active signs of nesting. And it is re required that you clean out the nesting before you deploy this. A bird's sense of home is very strong. And so they will come back. Um, unless you've cleaned it out before you deploy the product. We've also learned that even when the product has gone off several months later, that birds sometimes are hesitant to come back because even though it doesn't have a strong smell anymore, they recognize the bag is hanging there unless they've been removed and taken down. 
They're easy to throw away. They're uh, totally safe for the environment um, and easy to hang up. It's They're little, literally two ounce or 50 gram bags that are easy to hang. We've used them in lots of different places, substations, overhead lines, cross arms, transformers, uh, depots and warehouses, um, especially open bay or high bay ceilings, hang them from the rafters where the birds will come in and roost in the, in the warehouses and then poop all over the service trucks down below. Nobody likes that. And this chases them out. A couple of examples here. The one on the left is a uh, very high voltage uh, nuclear power station um, that they had uh, outdoor concrete walls. Those are, I uh, can't remember now, I think either 500 or 750 kVA uh, gas filled, um, you know, uh, phases up there above. And the birds would come in and nest on all that support uh, architectural work there um, in the generator bay. And so you can see him using a hot stick to deploy the hanging bags. Similarly, on an outdoor substation, this particular one's in Oklahoma, um, you see they they hung multiple bags together, looped them over a piece of yarn, and the bags would, like a bolo tie, and they hang together and makes a stronger scent in one place. And so there's an eight-foot span across those live face connectors, which they couldn't get close to. That, again, is a generator station that you can't service because it's never down. And so they, we did this and it worked perfectly to chase the birds away and they haven't been back. So in summary, this topic is all about getting ahead of the curve. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Just like your grandmother might've said, you know, plan for it because you know it's coming. Critter guards distinctly different. We don't cover each device we block the highway that leads to that device. So it's easier to specify, easier to install, no service required, um, near universal protection, can be installed hot if, if need be. Um, and it's already, we've got 20 plus years and counting in, um, uh, in, in our history with no failures. So we encourage your investigation and I appreciate your patience in uh, listening to this presentation. There's an email for you. If um, you have any questions, uh, hit our website, www.critterguard.org, or reach out by email, um, and uh, we'll get right back to you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Randy? Okay. Thanks very much, uh, John. Appreciate it. Thanks for the presentation. One of the questions was, can this be installed on telephone as well as power cable? Yes, absolutely. We have a number of telephone companies as customers. What's the hazard there when it's telephone? Um, almost nothing. Um, because if it's a shielded, uh, twisted pair type phone line, or even if it's a coax, it's insulated already. Mm -hmm. um, and so the system, the entire system I mentioned, only weighs about three pounds. The, um, the weight of the line and the tension on uh, telephone lines uh, can certainly support a three pound weight somewhere along the line. So yeah, we've had them up for years. Uh, and again, no complaints. So um, yeah, there's, uh, I've not heard of a single negative issue when installing on a telephone line. Another question was, um, how, how is this product distributed? And can we get a list of distributors for the line guard? Yeah, we have distributors all over the world. Um, in the U.S., it's uh, the distributors are all the normal people that you might already know of, like Annixter and Wesco, Graybar, um, Irby, uh, the list, uh, CED. Uh, the list goes on. Um, overseas, uh, it could be people that we might not know, but in most cases, uh, we have a number of utilities that actually don't do their own purchasing. All of their utility-related purchasing goes through a selected distributor anyway. And so we would encourage you, if you're one of those utilities and you're like, who can I buy this from? By all means, have your selected distributor that you're used to dealing with because they have carry all of your insulators and maybe wire and cable and 
connectors and any number of other products that you install, this would be another product in their catalog. And that's really what happens is, is that for large utilities, and I'll name some big ones you've all heard of, Duke Energy and American Electric Power and Ameren UE and, and Avangrid and Entergy and First Energy, uh, all of these, you know, massive uh, public utilities all have their own distributors that they buy through. <coughs> when they have a request, they a request for, you know, animal mitigation, they go to the distributor, the distributor contacts Critter and we ship to where the, 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 the purchase requirement is. So we drop ship to wherever that could be, um, internationally it could be nationally we don't care like i said we ship to six countries around the world if you don't have a distributor and you still want to buy a critter guard by all means contact us directly we'll sell to you directly another question was are these devices affected by ice and snow good question uh the answer is no the rollers um i don't have a close-up picture here but the rollers have built into them what's called a weep hole. And so if it rains um, and snows or blows or freezes and it gets inside the, the roller, um, as it melts, that water will drip out of the weep hole. And it's for that reason that we believe the system has stayed on the line for years and years and years because the water can't stay trapped. Does the ice affect the rollers? Yes, it does, obviously. Um, if it's a serious ice storm, it's the whole system is going to freeze up, but, um, maybe knock wood, but we haven't had any complaints of customers saying a squirrel got across when it was frozen. I don't think the squirrels like being up there in the frozen ice any more than we do. <laughs>